All right, we're going to talk about uh, 8.5 today, the use of trap properties, sorry, use properties of trapezoids in kites. our last section in 8.5 before we go into taking our test and move on. Uh, basically, uh, you can see down there at the bottom of your screen, a trapezoid is a quadrilateral but not a parallelogram, okay, which should be very evident by these legs here, that they will at one point intersect each other if they were extended out. It's not a parallelogram. And it has one. It has exactly one pair of parallel sides, and not two in this case. Okay, the parallel sides are called the bases. So right here, those parallel sides, no matter how the shape is oriented, okay, the parallel sides are always called the bases. So over here, these would be your bases as well, even though the trapezoid is standing up on end. The other sides, the non-parallel sides, if you will are called the legs. So here's a leg and here's a leg. And those, like I said earlier, will intersect if they are continued out. And so here's another one and here's the other legs over here. Okay. And they don't always have to be congruent. As you can tell in these pictures here, they're not congruent. They're not necessarily the same. But since you have a set of parallel lines, these legs become transversals. And so with that being said, you now have consecutive interior angles, okay? Meaning that those angles will add up to equal 180 degrees. So those are your consecutive interior angles. Which makes sense because... If you look at those four angles and their consecutive interior, you have two sets of consecutive interior angles. So two sets of angles that equal 180 degrees. So two times 180, you're still going to get your 360 degrees, which we learned earlier in the chapter. Uh, every quadrilateral has 360 degrees. Okay, let's move on. So here we have another trapezoid, and notice what word's popping up here. Now you're seeing the word median mid-segment. If you remember on our triangles unit, we uh, triangles also had a median or a mid-segment, okay? And so with the trapezoid like the one we have here, here's our bases right here. These are our parallel lines, okay? And so the two bases have another line in between them that is also parallel, and that's your mid-segment. So all three of those lines are actually parallel to one another. Now, the mid-segment's going to be important for us because it'll help us solve certain geometric problems when we get into this section. The way you find the mid-segment is you take half times base 1 plus base 2. So essentially what you're doing is you're averaging base 1 and averaging base 2, dividing, and you get the average of the two bases, and that's where your mid-segment comes in. So if I, if I take these out for just a second, and instead we put, I don't know, let's do a 10 here, and uh, 8 here, okay? If we wanted to figure out the length of the mid-segment, what we could do is, is we could say the mid-segment is equal to, again, half, times base 1 plus base 2, or I like to write it like this, base 1 plus base 2 divided by 2. And so then what you're going to end up with is 10 plus 8 divided by 2, or 18 divided by 2, and in this case the mid-segment would equal 9. So that's one way to find the mid-segment, or that's how you find the mid-segment if you're given the two points, or the two other, uh, excuse me, the two bases. Now, if you're given one base and one mid-segment, you could obviously manipulate it using your algebra skills in order to solve the other base. So you can be able to, be able to, you need to be able to manipulate these in any way necessary to solve for whatever you're missing. So if we go back to our original problem here, Okay, we see that 
we want to solve for x. So if I want to solve for x, I could set this I could set this up algebraically and basically what I could do is I could say okay, using the same formula and again, I I prefer to use this formula here. So using that same formula, what I'm going to do is is I'm going to do 8x eight x plus twenty two x over two is equal to thirteen x plus six. Okay, you actually can solve this two ways. Uh, the quick easy way is to add eight and twenty two x and get thirty x over two is equal to thirteen x plus 6, and then you end up with 15x is equal to 13x plus 6. Subtract 13x from both sides, you get 2x is equal to 6, or you get x is equal to 3. That's a quick and easy way, I, and that's fine. You can use that method anytime you can, but I want to show you another algebraic way just in case you come into a problem that that's not that simple. Okay, uh, You might have an x on top. You might have 8 plus 22x, and if that's the case, you can't combine unlike terms. So in that case, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to multiply the 2 out. And this will cancel here, leaving me with 8x plus 22x is equal to, got to distribute that 2 here and here. So 26x plus 12. Okay, I want to... Combine my like terms over here and get 30x equals 26x plus 12. Subtract 26x from both sides, you end up with 4x is equal to 12. Divide both sides by 4, and you end up with x is equal to 3. So in either case, it comes out the same way. But again, I'm showing you this right here because it's not always going to be that simple to where I'm just going to say, okay, 8x plus 22x. Okay, so just be able to do all of these methods and you'll be okay. Okay, and that's how we find that mid-segment. Again, it's like an average of the base 1 and base 2. Okay, moving on. All right, here we're going to start talking about an isosceles trapezoid. If you look at this particular uh, triangle right here, what you're going to find out a couple, is a couple of things. First of all, is that here you have an isosceles triangle. Okay, this is an isosceles triangle, meaning that this side here and this side here are congruent. Okay, so if I was to take away the top of my triangle, like so, okay, I now have a trapezoid. And since these angles were congruent before, or these sides were congruent before, they're going to remain congruent here. And since they remain congruent there, this is what creates an isosceles trapezoid. Like I said earlier in the, in the video, you don't have to have, both these sides don't have to always be congruent. They just happen to be congruent in this one. That's why we call it an isosceles trapezoid. Now, if we look closer here, one of the things that you're going to notice is You have the legs being parallel, I'm sorry, congruent to one another. You're also going to have both pair of bases, base angles are congruent to each other. So that means here, these angles are going to be congruent to each other. Because remember, if this was an isosceles triangle, the base angles of an isosceles triangle are congruent, okay? And then you're going to have diagonals that are congruent to each other. So that means that this line here is congruent to this line here. And essentially what you're doing is you're creating congruent triangles as well. Okay, so that'll help you because if you notice, if you go back here, you're going to have, because of the sharing of the sides, since those are, if you look at this triangle here, since those are congruent, these share the same base and it has the same leg side there, then you're going to have side angle sides, so you're going to have congruent triangles as well. Okay? Which may or may not help you in the grand scheme of things, but it might help you when you're trying to do some problem solving. 
So basically what you need to remember from the isosceles trapezoids are just simply these characteristics or these properties right here. So the legs are congruent, both pairs of base angles are congruent, and the diagonals are congruent. Notice they're not bisectors, okay? So be, make sure you understand that, you know, these little segments are not congruent to one another. They're not bisecting each other, nor are these perpendicular, okay? We're not talking about a rhombus or anything like that, not in this one, okay? So that's basically your isosceles trapezoid. And last but not least, uh, we're going to talk about kites. And kites we don't talk about, we don't use a whole lot, but uh, for this section you need to know them. A uh, kite, again, is not a parallelogram. None of these are parallelograms, okay? Uh, it has two pair of adjacent congruent sides. That means that this side, NL, is congruent to LP, and this side, NQ, is congruent to PQ, okay? So these sides are congruent, and that's kind of your definition of a kite. Now notice here, we have some similarities to rhombus here when we're dealing with the kite. Okay, so you have diagonals here that will intersect each other, but when they intersect each other, they form right angles. So they diagonals perpendicularly intersect each other. Okay. One diagonal is bisected, okay? If you look at the picture and you just make an assumption from the picture, what diagonal do you think is being bisected? Is it NP or is it LQ? Yeah, it's pretty common sense to be able to tell. And even in a real world uh, kite, you can tell that this segment right here is being, this diagonal right there is being bisected. Okay? So the long diagonal is not obviously bisected, but the long diagonal bisects angles. Okay? So bisects angles. So right here, and right here, those are going to be congruent. And then down here and here, those are going to be congruent as well. Okay? So you have two angles that are congruent. And so your two angles that are going to end up being congruent are these two right here. Okay, so a lot of stuff going on with the kite, but shouldn't be too terribly difficult. So this is just kind of the end of our chapter 8, where we're, we've gone through parallelograms, we've gone through rectangle squares and rhombus, uh, and so we talked about in this segment here, trapezoids and now kites. So that's all you need to know. If you have any questions, please feel free to, con uh, feel free to write them down, ask me in the morning or after school, and I will see you guys tomorrow.